Все время голодным держит, судя по всему. У мяса не дал уходит He creates a counter-current, so you don't break that surface tension. So they can just sneak up like this without creating a ripple. Very, very dangerous. All right. Give me a little bit of food here. And the other week, we were swapping them. And we, we got an airlock just there. And we went to lure Hagrid in there. And he just ran straight and gave and chased Jesse all the way down the side there. <laughs> Когда же он его покормит? Только дразнит. Страшно. Perfect. And yeah, he's 
been here for a few years now out here. Now, this bloke is Kathy of Bread. He's 30 years of age, born right here at Hartley's. Come on. Ooh. Yeah. Have a crack. Don't look at me. Nice. He's about 4 metres, 250 kilo. Saltwater crocodile. Male. Too big to be a female. But yeah, yeah he's, he's roughly about 4 metres, 250 kilo. It is pretty hard to put him on the scales. And um, we, we did try and get a recent measurement on him, but it is, it is very hard to put a tape measure on these things when they're not restrained. <laughs> It did cost us a, uh, a work experience kit, actually. <laughs> now this afternoon, I'm going to go through a few things, how these animals hunt, how they attack, and most importantly, how to avoid the old crocodile attack. Because in my personal opinion, I reckon Mick will agree, you get grabbed by one of these things and pulled in the water, you are done. Alright, so the biggest thing we push here is prevention. Do not get in the water with the croc. Alright, I'm a professional. I've been doing this for like two weeks now, so I'm heaps good at it. Right? <laughs> now, this guy's got a really good name. Alright, so usually, you know, most wildlife parks and croc parks have got the usual show crocs like Killer, Psycho, Goliath, Godzilla. This bloke here, Hagrid. Alright. They like that bloke on Harry Potter with a big buffy head. For his size, his head is pretty big. All right, so that's why we gave him that name. And you know, the kids can relate with him a little bit. And yeah, he is a fantastic show croc. Now, <clears throat> at the moment, I've got no idea where this croc is, but he knows exactly where I am. All right, so they are very good at hunting and evolution definitely favored them. They've got some very handy adaptations. When it comes to hunting and concealing themselves. This is what you would call a semi-aquatic ambush predator, okay? What's that? A bit of swell in there. So he is very dangerous down here on the water's edge and out of the water. He's not designed to run across paddocks and chase down racehorses. They don't work like that. He's got these tiny little T-Rex arms going on. All right, but down here on the water's edge and out here in the water, that's where they're dangerous. All right, so he's got some very handy adaptations. A, on a relaxed dive for this bloke, two to three hours, no worries. Right. An Australian freshwater crocodile was documented a few years ago now doing almost seven hours on a single breath. It's a long time. All right. Very patient. They don't need to eat every day. This guy could literally go the next year without eating. All right. I'd hate to do that next croc show, but he could do it. All right. Oh, he's coming around the back here and flanking me. Now, every time I'm taking a step, I'm putting off vibrations. Crocs have got dome pressure receptors, hundreds of them right across their face, and then one pretty much every single scar right across their body. There's like a little gel sack on the surface of the skin, hypersensitive nerve endings piercing in there. Any sort of vibration, he can pick up on it. Any sort of splashing, he's onto it. Alright. Now, even on a stretch of added dive for this crocodile, you're looking at 10 to 20 minutes, if not longer. And people ask us all the time, you know, what what would stress this thing out? If he was to lunge out and grab me, I would obviously be quite stressed by that. My breath hold would be about a minute. Minute number two, I'd be dead. But I believe in myself, I would fight back. I'd punch him in the face, I'd poke him in the eyes, I'd do something that would stress him out a little bit. Just like if he lunged out of the water and grabbed a buffalo by the leg and it started hooking into him with his horns, that would stress him. But even still under a bit of stress, 10, 20 minutes, no worries. Okay, so really good breath holds on them. Now, can you see him? The water's not normally this dirty because we've had a lot of rain, so it's sort of half clear. You can make out a little bit where it is, but today uh, is dangerous. <laughs> now, so he can hone in on something like. You know, where he was at the front here before, that's only a foot of water and you're successfully hiding a four metre crocodile. All right, so they flatten themselves out and they sneak up and they, they hone in on these vibrations. They're very good at it, okay? And 
He can sneak up in this really shallow water and he won't even break that surface tension. All right, so those enlarged scales across their back, they're known as osteoderms, they play a few roles. But when it comes to hunting, he can drop, drop, submerge, flatten out and sneak up in this really shallow water. And it looks like the osteoderms are slightly offset. As he drops under and sneaks up, he creates his own crown occurrence. So he doesn't break that surface tension. Very, very dangerous. You imagine like in murky water like this, or even low light conditions, late afternoon, night time, you would have no idea where that crocodile is. And especially when the water's like this, they favour these sort of environments. Don't be misled by that name saltwater crocodile. People hear that and they think they're only found in salt water, but that is not the case at all. Right, they've just got the most active salt excretion glands at the back of the tongue there. So when they do go into salt water, they can excrete the salt out when they're feeding and drinking and so on. And it allows them to be out there for months and months and months at a time. But something like 70% of these animals spend their entire life in a freshwater environment just like this. This is a perfect hunting environment for a croc. Nice small water hole. You know, this was up in Cape York somewhere. You had a water hole like this. Or, you know, there's a big river nearby. Animals are more likely going to come to something like this. They're more confident to come to a smaller body of water. Wallabies, pigs, dingoes, cattle, horses, even Eurasianic buffalo. These guys can tackle them. A huge variety of food items, and obviously, we fall into that prey size category. Okay? Now, what happens is they just lunge out, grab something, straight back in the water. Very, very quick, all over. Alright? Whether it be a pig or a dingo or you know, a person, they just grab it. His big teeth are designed for interlocking into prey. They're not sharp, but that power behind his jaws across this size, three and a half thousand pounds at least, applied close and jaw pressure. Just draws him into the prey, back into the water, drowns it, make sure it's stopped killing. He might, you know, he might come up 10, 20 minutes later, and then he'll start to consume it. Even smaller stuff, you know, fish, eels, turtles, stingrays, wetland birds, he just grab me out, right, bang, kill it, down the hatch it goes. But yeah, your biggest stuff, he'll take you out into the water and he'll, and he'll generally drown it. All right. Now, when it comes to crocodile attacks here in Australia, there's actually not that many, all right, unlike the media portrays. Like this year, we've only had one fatality, okay? Um, and in the last 150 years, we've had 75 documented fatalities here in North Australia. That's it. Okay. More people have been killed by horses in the last 20 years here in Australia. Now, when we talk to locals about who's most likely, who do they reckon is most likely to get killed by a crocodile, they always say tourists, straight up. They're like, ah, tourists, they're the ones that are going to get eaten. Especially Germans, which is why they put the actual and the warning signs. But when we looked into that, as we do, there's actually been only been one documented German tourist being killed by a crocodile here in Australia, and she was told by her local Aussie tour guide she'll be right to go swimming in the middle of the night in Kakadu National Park, which is renowned for these things. They went past a sign like this, 15 of them, hung their towels on it, and the guide said, yeah, you'll be right, guys, go out there for a swim. I mean, no big crocodiles hang out here. They hung their towels on this, they jumped out as a group into this body of water, so I'm out in the middle there, big four and a half metre crocodile, motored in, bang, grab this girl, gone, all over very quickly. Very unfortunate, and that tour guide got in a lot of trouble. But yeah, if you look at statistics, who's most likely to get killed by a crocodile here in Northern Australia? Leading by a long way is local Aussie males, all right? And it's usually late afternoon or at night, and there's usually something else involved. The alcohol, good old liquid curries. People get into the water to retrieve a lure or, you know, a dare, swim across and back before you get eaten, that sort of stuff. And the outcome is poor, all right? And I'll tell you about a couple of stories a little bit later on to put things into perspective for you. But for now, I'm just going to... I've got a bit of bait rope over here, a bit of natural fibre rope with some... Uh, First. <clears throat> <Ooh. laughs> Alrighty, I 
just draw him up here. <laughs> Where's that little sicko kid? <laughs> Full of water, you know, put more of your body inside the croc, and I believe that one is a theory, though. There's no, there's no set technique on what to do, you know. Um, but we know that poking in the ice has worked. Right, I'll tell you about a story that happened up on the Cape York Peninsula about 20 years ago now. A whole bunch of people camping up there along one of the beaches, and <coughs> When they were camping, they were only about 40 metres from the high tide line. We recommend when camping in crop country, at least 100 metres, because they have been known to come up in the campsites, smell of bait, fish and so on. Anyway, this big crop comes wandering up. There's a couple of boats in front of the campsite that smell of fish and bait. Big crop wanders up. There's an elderly lady in a tent by herself. She's got the tent wide open. She's trying to get as much breeze as she possibly can to cool herself down. It was really hot. This croc's just come up and gone, you beauty. Grabbed her, turned around, started walking back towards the water's edge of her. Naturally, she was pretty stressed by this, okay? And she started yelling and screaming, 
and a guy woke up, seeing what was happening, ran over, dived onto the back of the croc, he jammed his thumbs in its eyes, it actually spat her, had a crack at him, broke his arm, he got away, grabbed a lady, he saved her, he was a hero. No doubt about it. Alright? And then a couple of years ago now, I was watching a documentary on crocodile attacks here in Australia, where people had survived. And this incident came up, and the lady that, that got attacked, she's there being interviewed, the guy that saved her, he's sitting next to her, he's not really saying much, the lady's just, you know, yapping away at the camera. Old mate almost looks disappointed. Turns out, he successfully saved his mother-in-law. <laughs> That is un Australian. <laughs> if, if that was me, oh, I would have just let nature take its place. Uh, yeah. But he, that bloke, had two significant advantages. A, the crocodile had hold of someone else. <laughs> That's quite significant. And B, they were on land. Alright, I believe if that had been in the water, it would have been a completely different outcome. Alright. Do you want to throw just a tiny bit of skin or something at him? See if I can get him to let go of him. Keep chewing it. reckon if you go swimming in areas with densities like that, there is a 100% chance you will get attacked. Right, the numbers over the MT, they're plateauing. I don't think you could fit another croc in the Northern Territory. It's like fully crocked out. Right. Queensland, not as high yet. Neither is WA, but yeah, the MT, man, they are packed. Back to natural carrying capacity. Anyway, to kick things off, oh, and this is from an eyewitness account. We met a guy here about a year ago that actually witnessed this fatality. And what happened was, he said, to kick things off, there's a 30th birthday going on on the Exit River at, at Caravan Park. Where they are, everyone's safe. From their vantage point, they can see a four and a half metre crocodile on the other side of the river sitting in the sun. All right. Day goes on, lots of drinking. Gets to 5.30 in the afternoon, supposedly two of these blokes look at each other and decide to have a bet on who can swim to the other side and back before that sucker gets in the water. How do you reckon that's going to pan out? Not good, alright? Anyway, they jump in in front of their friends, girlfriends and so on. They make it to the other side. Upon their return, that croc had slipped in, boom, toast of one of those blokes. He was never found. Police and rangers turned up very quick. They spent the night spotlighting that section of the river looking for human remains and crocs. They found six big crocs and they shot them. All big fellas, all over four and a half metres. And, you know, these crocs are like probably 50, 60, even 70 years of age, even older possibly. And uh, not one of them had the remains of that bloke. So we don't know what happened there. It had gone upstream quite some distance or downstream to consume. We'll never really know. But yeah, that incident, definitely avoidable. All right, didn't need to happen. We are not forced into the waterways here in Australia. All right. And uh, the old crocs, you know, they're the ones that suffer. Next incident, again, Northern Territory. Uh, this time on the Adelaide River. Again, crazy numbers on the Adelaide River. And this particular section of the river 
You know these boat tours we drive around, we zoom around and throw food out of the crocodiles? They do that on this particular section. It's the only place in northern Australia where they're legally allowed to feed wild crocs. And man, they congregate there, and big fellas too. Anyway, bloke comes down to the river in the afternoon with his wife, chasing our old Baron Mundy's, flicking lures, he's doing everything right. And then the mistake he made, his lure got tangled in some reeds, and he had that Aussie she'll be right attitude, and he slipped into the water to wade out and grab that lure. I read in a report, which I believe was from his wife, a statement, and that lure, ah, what was that? Don't worry about that thing, there's sharp rocks in here. Um, I read this, this statement that it was a $5 lure from Kmart. Right, so, you know, I do a lot of fishing myself, and it is frustrating when you lose a lure, but cut your losses. Right, this bloke jumped in, went to wade out of that lure, Right there, four and a half metre cock, gone, all over, very quick. Wife heard a bit of a scream, turned around, seen the triangular scooch of the tail, speared back into the water, old mate, gone. Alright, police and rangers turned up very quickly, they located the crocodile within about two hours, I believe he still had evidence in the mouth, which is always hard to explain, and they shot him. Alright, and a lot of people were very upset by this. This crocodile was very well known to the locals and the tour guides. It was unique in how he looked. He was very darkly pigmented from the neck back. And then forward, he had this huge, big, white head on him. We've never seen a crocodile like it before. And the locals, those Territorians, they are funny people. And in a good way, they nicknamed this crocodile Michael Jackson. <laughs> and they shot old Michael. And a lot of people were very upset by it. Right. Both those incidents, Avoidable. Well, when it comes to staying safe in crop country, pay attention to these signs. They're there to help you. All right. Straight away, you know, there's a few different languages going on here. You know, something shady's happening. You got a crocodile swimming, and then you got a guy with his head cut off. All right. <laughs> Meters from the waterhole. And luckily for us, we were camping on the back of our utes and a big fella, about 4.3 metres, come walking right up into the campsite. It was dark, I was cooking a fresh barramundi on the fire and the coals there, and we just heard some rustling. Flick the torch around and there's a crop right there. Crazy. So they will come up in the campsite. So yeah, give yourself, you know, at least 100 metres. Rooftop tents are a guard. Um, yeah, just adjust your behaviour a little bit. They're not gathering up in the pub on a Friday night and working out who they're going to attack next. That's not how they work. They go on opportunities. All right. Um, we get asked all the time, you know, what do you do if one jumps out at you? Lucky for you, we are quite experienced. We get chased every day. You know what we do when one of these things chases us? We turn around and we run in the opposite direction. Flat out. All right. Push everyone else out of the way. <laughs> you always punch out your personal best when one of these things is chasing you. Okay? And you'll probably punch out something else as well. <laughs> There's a couple of techniques floating around good old Facebook of what to do if one jumps out of you. One is running zigzag. Last thing you want to do is be side on to one of these things. That's where they like hit hardest. And what's the fastest point for me to be? A straight line, that's right. This other technique they've got to do, this is the crocodile. This is Bilbo, run in a circle. <laughs> do not do that, all right? I reckon the people that come up with these have never, ever been chased, all right? Um, if, I'm guessing a fair wacky user on holidays, yeah, probably getting ready to sip it tonight. Um, don't do silly things, don't go swimming with crocodiles when you're intoxicated, but if you are Staying in the Cairns area, there are places you can go swimming safely, more than once. All right, you've got Crystal Cascades down the road here. Beautiful spot, cool water, canopy cover, water coming off the headlands there. It's too cold, crocs won't, won't be there. Mossman Gorge, similar spot up the road. You've got Lake Heacham up on the tablelands. Um, your hotel swimming pool is a solid option. <laughs> and if you're swimming at the beaches, I am contradicting myself a little bit, you will see these signs there, but you can swim at the beach, beaches in a patrolled area only, and only in the daytime, never at night, and never ever near a river mouth or a creek mouth. At the moment, you'll be inside a stinger nets, all right? It's not just crocs, there's like box jellyfish, ear candies, cone shells, stonefish, bull sharks. Enjoy your holiday. <laughs> all right, so, yeah, just adjust your behavior a little bit, and you'll be right.
Now, I am going to feed this fellow one more time up the guts here, but before I do, do you have any questions for me related to crocs? No one's got any questions. What was that? Are they buoyant? They're like neutrally buoyant, yeah. So they can just go. They can actually manipulate certain organs in their lungs and they just flatten down and go flop under. Very, very good at it. Yeah, mate? If they're over about 3.3 metres, you can pretty much guarantee it's going to be a male because only the boys get big. Before that, it's an internal examination which I am not demonstrating. Alright? Yeah, mate? Alright. Biggest one we've ever brought into captivity was 6 metres, 17 centimetres, weighing over 1,000 kilos. Caught in 2011 in the Philippines. His name was Lo Long. Big unit. That's the biggest one we can prove. People have claimed, you know, oh, yeah, I've seen it. energy, so when they're not doing much, when you see them up on the bank there, they're just breathing very, very softly. Alright, so, and they'll be usually through the nose. Sometimes you'll see that palatial valve, facial valve open up at the throat there, and you'll can breathe in through there, but it's usually you'll see the nostrils open and close. Yeah, but just very lightly. Yeah. Alrighty, so I'm just going to, if you've got any more questions, come and see me. I'm going to feed him one more time. Um, I'll feed him out that direction. Wait. Look at the chicken. Yeah. He knows what's coming. Oi, look, look, look. Come on. Nice. Alright. Come on, big fella. Let's go, buddy. Oh, I can't see him, I can't see him, I can't see him. Wait. Right there, buddy. Good boy. Nice. Alrighty, guys. Coming up next, we got 345 down in Gonwa, the kangaroo feed, you get the hand feed the skippies, then they'll go out the back and feed the wombat and the quolls. Then at 415, cassowary feeding. Okay, if you don't know what a cassowary is, they're like a an emu dressed in drag. Alright. <laughs> And then at 4.30, if you thought this was dangerous, wait till you see koala feeding. All right, it's out of control. Anyway, enjoy your New Year's. I hope you're as hung out as I will be tomorrow.